Procedural generation, procedural materials are all very well and good until you end up with issues like this. Now I've already done a couple of videos on the channel when it comes to curves and pipes and things like that. This is a real quick and dirty way of actually making sure that textures themselves are applied to your models, procedural ones, perfectly. And as we can see up here, this is going to be our end result where we've got our UV map mapped perfectly across here without any horrible distortion and stretching based upon the length. Right. Let's get started. I'm going to take you through the whole process because it's really simple and delete everything in our scene and add in a simple curve. I'm going to look at this from the top so I can draw some more. Let's go into edit mode. I'm going to go to the draw on the left hand side and just put in a few extra curves. So we've got a variation of curves that we can work with. Now, ordinarily, we could go to the curve data, go to geometry, go to extrude and just make it bigger like so. Now this we cannot do because we cannot get the data that we need from this in order to map it. We're going to use geometry nodes to capture some of that data and then use it over in the shader editor. Now take a note if you have done something like this of the extrude because what we will need to do in geometry nodes is use double that figure. So I'm going to set this as 0.5 for the moment. Now before we go any further let's set up the textures for this so we can see what's going on. Over in the shading workspace let's go ahead and create ourselves a new material and in this base color I'm going to click and drag to the left. I'm going to type in image. We're going to select color and I'm simply going to click new. Go down to generated type and do the color grid. When we click new image, we can see that it's applied with the base UVs and some of them are nice. And the longer it is, the more stretched it becomes. We're not actually going to do this, but we're going to control this vector input. What's actually happening here and always happens if we just plug in a texture coordinate, this will be using the default UVs that are generated. We will be using our own UV. So I'll delete the texture coordinate for the moment and we'll come back here in a bit. Now I'm going to duplicate this so we can see a before and after. So shift and D and I'm going to lift that up on the Z axis. So they're just one on top of the other. This other one on top, this is where we're going to add our geometry nodes. So with that selected, we're going to go to geometry nodes and click new. So our geometry is coming in and then our geometry is coming out, but we don't want it to be a mesh. And even though this is a curve and has curved data, if we go ahead and try and do anything, let's say we go to add curve operations and go to curve to mesh and just drop that on we get this information that the geometry is an unsupported type it's a mesh the moment that we add anything under geometry whether it's this extrude or a bevel it converts the object type to a mesh object we don't want that so we're going to set that to zero and what we will do now that this is gone is we can extrude this within the geometry nodes itself so let's go to add mesh operations and we want to extrude the mesh now, the other thing that I want to do here is I want to make sure that snapping is turned on so I can make these look nice and pretty like so. Now, we're going to need one more thing here, so I'm just going to move that out of the way. First of all, let's get this extrude mesh working, and then we're going to capture some details. So the extrude mesh, we've got this offset here. I'm going to click and drag to the left, and we need to just extrude it on the Z axis. Because that's a purple socket, it's a vector. It's going to contain multiple bits of information. So I want to combine X, Y, Z going into that. If I go ahead and select the Z and increase that to a value of one, nothing happens. And that's because there are no faces. If we see at the top here, we've got faces. We need an edge. And there we go. That's set to one. This one down here is set to 0 0.5. Remember, we're using double the amount because it's just offsetting in one direction, whereas this extrude is in both directions. OK, so that appears to be somewhat working. However, it doesn't have any UV data yet, and we need to capture that from this area. In order to do that, we're going to go add attribute and store the named attribute. So we're going to store the UV that we end up generating in a moment, and we need to store it using certain parameters. First of all, let's plug in what we want. We want a UV unwrap. If we pop that on, we can see that we've got a purple socket going to a gray socket. And this is gonna give us a problem because this is taking more than one bit of data and just making it one bit of data, basically. This needs to be of type vector because we're taking in multiple parts. And then secondly, we need this part here set to face corner. Finally, we need to give it a name and I'm going to call it UV map. How you spell this and whether or not there are capital letters is important. It has to be exactly the same when we go over to our shading workspace. 
And that's it. That's the basic node structure that we're going to need to capture the UVs of this curve object. Now, if we go over into the shading workspace, we can finish this off. We're going to plug this vector into a mapping node. First of all, that will give us some scaling that we can do. And then into this vector input for the mapping node, we're going to plug in a UV map. This is a type of input. And here we can name our UV map. And this is where you type in exactly what we typed in a few moments ago. And there we go. Now, both of these are sharing the same material. Let's just unplug that for the moment and then duplicate it and plug that back in and then we can get our bottom one working again. Now I'm just going to undo that and plug it in and that will use the default map like so. And this is where we want to use our mapping node. If I click and drag all the way down we can pull this up until it looks about right for what we're doing. And this is great. So if you've got a repeating texture, a road texture, some gravel, anything that you are putting on these ribbons, you'll be able to now scale it. And it doesn't matter what the length of these curves are, it's all sorted. If you found this video useful, remember to like, subscribe for more. And if you want to check this out on a road or even pipe work, you can check those videos out right here.